All right, today we are going to continue modeling transformations. And uh, last time we uh, started talking about 2D rotation and how I, uh, in the last uh, five minutes, in the last five minutes, we talked about how we can rotate a point around an arbitrary pivot point. So uh, this is what we did. So we talked about, uh, I mentioned why we need to uh, have all the transformations as matrix multiplication and uh, the convention there is that uh, for example with me uh, for example all the matrices will be like three by three matrices like this uh, in 2d so rotation around origin so this is we have seen translation uh, it's which is a three by three matrix translation has two parameters tx ty the displacement in the x direction and the y direction, which may uh, be negative, positive. So if we right multiply a point, uh, let me annotate. If we right multiply a point with this matrix uh, like this, and if we have our, oh, you don't have my, uh, okay, sorry about that. Let me see, let me check. All right, let me check my, oh, okay. So, uh, Belemir can hear it, uh, Said also can hear it. Maybe it's your speaker that is low volume, uh, Magella. Okay, let's see if the recording is uh, going all right. Yeah, I think the recording is picking my voice. I can see that this bar is going high, so. Okay, let me get back to, oh, okay, um, I will try to speak louder uh, if uh, it's the volume. So let me uh, get back to this. Uh, uh, slide. Uh, so we have our uh, point as x, y, 1, 2D points. So when we have in two dimensions, we are going to represent our uh, points as column vectors. Okay, so and this is just a convention. For example, we could have we may ask, for example, why don't we represent our points as row vectors like this? And the answer will be we could. Okay, so that's just a choice. If we if we did that, we would have to left multiply uh, with this because this is a one by three matrix. In order to multiply it with a three by three matrix like this, you can only do it left multiplication. Maybe we could do that. Maybe some actually there may be some graphic systems in which all these compositions uh, may be from left to right like this. But uh, by uh, just choice, I think uh, people uh, try to uh, just uh, represent these x uh, points in 2D or 3D as column vectors. So this is a convention uh, a representation choice. Uh, we have our points, uh, which are will be our vertices, as column vectors like this. And since this is a 3 by 3 matrix and this is a 3 by 1 uh, column vector, the way after we multiply them, we get ourselves another 3 by 1 uh, vector which will be the transformed coordinates as you can see the last row is always 0 0 1 making and if this last uh, third dimension is always one uh, in this column vector we are using this last number will remain one and this is called the the last dimension is called the homogeneous coordinates uh, in, in three dimensions we will have a fourth dimension uh, which will be like x, y, z, uh, w, or h sometimes uh, to indicate h. So our, we, we are going to represent our uh, three-dimensional points like this, where w uh, is going to be 1 for regular uh, 3D points. But if, if it's not 1, if it's something else, for example, x, y, z, h, and we'll, for perspective projection, we are going to make h to be something else, uh, and the reason will be it will allow us to uh, perform division operation. For example, in three dimensions, this, this point will be equivalent to the three-dimensional point x divided by h, y divided by h, oops, y divided by h, and z divided by h. 
Okay, so the way these homogeneous coordinates uh, are converted to regular 3D coordinates or regular 2D coordinates is this last uh, coordinate divides the others. So in 2D, for example, in, in homogeneous coordinates, this is x, y, 1. In 2D, it's going to be x divided by 1, y divided by 1. Those are the two-dimensional coordinates. Since this is 1, it doesn't change anything, right? And this h, we are going to see... We will we will have a transformation matrix again. We will be it will be impossible to do, for example, something like this. Is this a this doesn't look like a linear transformation, right? Look at this. The x coordinate, uh, the new x coordinate is x divided by z. If given a point x y z, uh, if you want to transform the points such that x prime is equal to x divided by z. Why would we want to? What, is, what may be the purpose of such a transformation? Any any guesses? Uh, we are going to learn this. But why would we want to divide x coordinate by z coordinate? Any any get guess uh, from you? What what is the meaning of such a thing? For example, if you have larger z coordinates, you are going to have smaller projected or yeah actually I gave a hint uh, smaller uh, smaller coordinates so exactly it's from 3d to 2d transformation which is basically what we were doing in ray tracing right I mean it's projection uh, so and the, the effect of this will be far away objects the z coordinate will uh, after we perform a camera transformation where our, our i point is at a zero zero and the z-axis is like how far your objects are to the uh, image window. Uh, this is basically will the effect of having far away objects appear, uh, appear in smaller on the image window. So this is exactly the perspective projection. And we will need to do a transformation that is like this. And which will not be possible by, uh, again, with matrix multiplication. But we are going to have this last row, which is always 0, 0, 1 in other transformation transformations we are going to have have this something else which will make this h not one anymore so uh, which will allow us to do perspective projection but this will come in the uh, i mean uh, two weeks from now, i mean just before the midterm exam uh, on our thursday lecture we'll probably cover this uh, around that time so it will be the perspective projection or projection transformations will be the last thing we will be talking about in transformations so let's get back to, but just I want you to give you a heads up so that you understand why we have this last column, why we represent our points with this additional uh, di uh, dimension. It will all uh, make sense if you uh, at least see the whole picture beforehand. Okay, so uh, we have seen, this is, this is rotation. We, last time we have derived this matrix, cos theta minus sin theta, and this all comes from this derivation that we did, uh, rotation around a, a point, uh, origin at theta degrees. For example, if this is my point P, I want to rotate it theta degrees, it's going to be P prime. And this is the theta degrees. What we did was we had this alpha. Uh, the thing that doesn't change is this r. And uh, we wrote the x and y coordinates of this px, uh, px and py in terms of r cos al alpha, r, uh, r times sin, sin alpha. And p prime becomes cos alpha plus beta. So uh, this was basically we used the uh, trigonometric formula for cos alpha plus beta uh, and wrote that in terms of cosine and sine and uh, this is how we came up with this matrix. So this uh, allows you, this is a basic rotation that transformation that allows you to rotate a point P if you have the points coordinates on the right hand side here it will allow you to rotate it that point around origin theta degrees. And when we come to scaling uh, scaling transformation is defined like this. Let me show you scaling here. Uh, the goal is to change the size of an object. Uh, it has two scaling factors like Tx and Ty. It has scaling uh, along the uh, x-axis and scaling along the y-axis. And the equation that we basically have is you multiply your original x-coordinate by this sx 
and you multiply original y coordinate with sy. You may ask, why can't we do perspective projection with scaling? Uh, because uh, instead of, for example, if uh, we have x times sx, it could just as well be x divided by, I mean, instead of given sx here, you could give 1 over sx, right? Uh, so why cannot we uh, use the scaling transformation for perspective transformation? For example, I can write x here equal to x divided by sx, okay? So why cannot I do that? Uh, use this one as my perspective projection. Any any ideas? So why do we really need three dimensions? I mean, as you can see, it could be done in two dimensions. So is it the or do you see any difference between these two things? Dividing by z or dividing by sx. The main difference is that here the inputs are constant. Okay, so when you're having these transformations, the transformation parameters are constants. It doesn't, it, uh, here, as you can see in this matrix, I don't have any uh, variable uh, with respect to the point that I'm transforming. The x, y, and z appears here. So I can apply this transformation to any point. So if you want to have, uh, if, if you want this transformation to depend on some of the parameters of your point, you'll have a different transformation for every one of those points. So it will, it will not be a fixed transformation matrix like this. Okay, so in, in other words, what I'm saying is that the main difference here is that uh, scaling allows you to multiply or divide your points with some constants with respect to some constant factors, Sx and Sy. Here, for a point x, y, z, uh, its z coordinate is a variable. It's not a constant. And uh, therefore, it doesn't uh, follow this form. So when you say, when you, when you want to have, I want to have x prime is equal to x divided by z, you cannot have all your variables, all your points appear at one place. You're not allowed to put z here, okay? Or, uh, for example, you're not allowed, instead of sx here, you're not allowed to write 1 over z. z is your input point. Uh, the transformation here gets has some uh, constants, uh, and uh, you, you're not allowed to put variables here. In other words, you need to find something in such a way that still the variables are going to appear here, uh, all the constants are going to appear in your transformation, but the effect will be x prime is equals the uh, equal to x divided by z, and the the way we do that will be to use that third dimension. But scaling is uh, like this. Uh, we just, the scaling uh, transformation is just uh, these, this is the main form of a scaling transformation and in three dimensions, uh, in two dimensions, we are actually going to, in homogeneous coordinates, the scaling matrix, basic scaling matrix look like, looks like this. We have again the final row, 0, 0, 1, which doesn't change the homogeneous coordinates. So in these modeling transformations, as you can see, this last row is always 0, 0, 1. And its main purpose, basically, in this case, is just to have uh, these transformation also as a multiplication. The rotation and scaling transformations are already multiplications, but having this third dimension in 2D allows us to have translation also defined as a multiplication. Now, I want to talk about a quick exercise uh, on scaling. Uh, let's try to, actually we did that, right? Uh, I talked about, for example, how we can, first, but now let's see how we can do it with our uh, scaling matrices. Imagine I have a cube here, and these are the top, uh, bottom left and top right corner of my in this case, it's 2D, so it's a square, not a cube. Uh, I have a square uh, which is 10 units, 10 unit length uh, with, at its sides, and it's from uh, 10, 10 to 20, 20. Now, I want to scale this so that it will be a 5, five, uh, five by 5 cube uh, centered at 15, 15. So in order to, so this is 15, 15 is the it's center. I don't want to displace this uh, square. I want it to be centered. So it should be between 20, 20, 
12.5, uh, 12.5, 12 and 17.5, 17.5. I, I want the new coordinates to, to be this. Now, how can you, uh, if you do the scaling, so it's half the size of the original cube, right? So if you do the scaling, uh, which is if you apply the scaling to these two corners, if you, this is how you represent your scale, uh, cube, so the scale, scale matrix is just going to be 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So this is my uh, scale by, uh, by half, uh, or uh, reduce the size uh, two times scale matrix as you can see everything is constant if I apply this to my 10 10 point it will give me 5 5 1 as a result if you do the multiplication so how we do the multiplication you get the first row so each row here tells me what the new x core I mean for the first row tells me what the new x coordinate is going to be with respect to the uh, x, y, and uh, w coordinates, x, y, or homogeneous coordinates of the given one. So it's like take 0 0.5 of your previous x coordinate, take 0 of your previous y coordinate, take 0 of your homogeneous coordinate, that's your new x coordinate. In other words, the new x coordinate just depends on the old x coordinate and it's half of it. Similarly, the second row tells me what my new y coordinate is going to be. Take 0 of your uh, original x Text, take half of your original y and zero of your of this. So it's basically 555. Five, five. As you can see, if we apply this, it will be a square between 555 five, five and 101010. 10, 10. So it, it's going to be exactly like this. It's half the size between 55 and 1010. 10. Okay, so it, it didn't, it didn't have the effect that we wanted to achieve. You wanted to reduce the size of the square by half, but uh, this transformation also has a tendency, this is just like it scales with respect to origin, so it, it also moves things towards origin. If we had the same, if our square was centered at origin, we will see that we would, it would not move. Okay, now knowing this, one thing we can do is, uh, and this, when we are composing transformations, we are going to be doing such things a lot we are going to perform some temporary transformations. Uh, we are going to first move our, since the scaling is with respect to origin, and we want to scale with respect to the center of mass, which is 15, 15. Why don't we make the center of mass at origin first, so that the scaling can be performed as if the square is around origin? So, in other words, if we do that, if we first translate minus 15 minus 15 so these are my sometimes you're going to write we don't need to write the entire 3 by 3 matrices when we are indicating these composite transformations this function t will indicate a matrix with these two parameters it will basically mean that as uh, 1 0 minus 15 0 1 minus 15 and 0 0 1 so this will indicate that. And then scale 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then translate your uh, cube back to 15, 15. Translate your square back to 15, 15. So these are all matrix multiplication. And you see how I wrote these? I said, this is the first thing you apply. And then this is the second thing you apply. And this is the third thing you apply. And I, I wrote them in right to left order because my original point will be here, x, y, 1. Okay? Uh, the, the closest proximity function transformation will be the first transformation to be applied on this. And this will be the translated point, which is, which is basically this. It will move, if you apply this to 10, 10, it will be minus 5, uh, minus 5. And the other one will be uh, is it, uh, 5, 5. So it's going to be a cube of size 10, which is minus 5, minus 5 to 5, 5. So it will be the same cube, just, just translated. So when you scale them by half, they are going to be minus 2. So you are going to be scaling 
this uh, point. So it's going to be minus 2.5 to 2.5 and then get it back to. So this translation was something temporary. We have to get our square back to its uh, center of mass. So we undo. This is like we're undoing this temporary transformation. As you can see, it's exactly the reverse. So if you just multiply these two together, you're going to get the identity matrix, which means that it doesn't do anything. And the last thing will be to get it back. And the final effect will be the square is uh, scaled. I mean, if, if you just multiply these three matrices together and look at the result, it will just achieve the uh, transformation, which is scaling with respect to pivot point 15, 15. Okay, any questions uh, from here? Uh, I hope it's clear. We are going to have lots of examples uh, involving uh, the, these composite transformations. And uh, let's see if I'm missing any. So this was the rotation with respect to a pivot point, the same. We first move the pivot point to origin. We, we, we already know how to rotate around origin with this cos theta minus sin theta sin cos theta uh, matrix. We translate with respect to origin and move the point back to here. The effect, the final effect will be the point is rotated around your pivot point, which is given as xr, yr in this case. So, uh, yeah, uh, homogeneous coordinates helps us, uh, uh, they, the, the, this functionality helps us to uh, have translation also as matrix multiplication, make all transformations as matrix operations. This allows us to compose these transformations together because matrix multiplication is associative, so this composition could be obtained as a single 3 by 3 matrix okay if you just do them since if you look at this left hand side they're all constant minus 15 minus 15 0 5 0 5 these are constant matrices on the left hand side so you multiply them once you get your 3 by single 3 by 3 matrix then you can apply this composite transformation to your thousands of vertices with just one matrix multiplication okay i mean uh, for every vertex instead of three multiplications for every vertex. So it's, uh, it's really uh, three times, it will be three times faster by just doing this. Um, so this is the homogeneous coordinates, as I said, is defined as an additional dimension in 2D. In this case, ours is going, we are always going to be one, uh, using one, but if it's some no, uh, variable h, uh, the homogeneous coordinates, its effect will be, uh, we just divide in 2D, the, the 2D coordinates are obtained by dividing xh by the, the homogeneous coordinates by the final um, homogeneous, um, the xh and yh by h. And uh, you can uh, intuitively also view uh, each point is going to be a line that is in, so this is our 2D plane, but each of these 2D planes are like each of these. Uh, homogeneous coordinate the final dimension if it's one for example it will correspond to a particular plane uh, if different values of that h or w in this case uh, that added, added dimension different values of that is going to correspond to different planes parallel to this one and our points are going to be uh, actually lines that are originating and uh, are uh, are our origin in three dimensions with this W edit. Uh, and uh, this is how you can intuitively view the homogeneous coordinates. But you don't need to uh, understand more details. I mean, I I'm sure homogeneous coordinates are used in other problems, other fields a lot. But in the context of this course, its main purpose will be uh, twofold. To, 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 uh, first, turn translations into matrix multiplications and second uh, allow us to do variable division of our coordinates with, with, with the, for example this, that x, x divided by z in perspective projection when we want to do perspective projection they're going to be helpful and when we want to represent translations as matrix multiplications they're also helpful in that regard uh, okay, so uh, this is oh okay. So this is this 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 is an, another thing. How do we transform vectors? Because vectors are just directions and 
a magnitude. A vector is uh, not, it doesn't specify a location in 2D space actually. So in other words, th this will be important when uh, we are, for example, trying to transform an object, but if we also have its normal vectors stored alongside the vector coordinates, we should be, we should be careful about transforming normal vectors of these triangles, for example, because when we are transforming them, uh, we can rotate the vector, we can rotate the vector, we can scale it, uh, but translation sh shouldn't be affected by the translation. Okay, a vector is just a direction and a magnitude. It doesn't have a position in 2D space. So uh, in, let, let me just tell you, I mean, talk about it like this. Imagine we have a line segment. Okay, so the line segment is represented by positions. Okay, so this x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now, Imagine I want to store the uh, normal to this line segment as a vector n, okay? Uh, this vector is nothing but it's going to be uh, y2 minus y1, actually y1 minus, it's going to be minus y2 minus y1, and x2 minus x1. Uh, so how did I get, get this normal vector? Uh, x2 minus, this is not comma, x2 minus x1. So direction of this vector is x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1, right? So in order to get a, another vector 90 degree to this one, uh, I just reverse the coordinates and put minus 1 in front of them. So if I put minus, I, mean, I could have gotten this other vector as well. Okay, uh, they are both perpendicular to this. So it doesn't matter which one you put the minus in front, uh, but uh, basically uh, in order to get this one, uh, I just, by looking at its shape, I wanted to say it like it's like, it's, it's x coordinates should be reverted in the other direction. That's why I put uh, minus in front of this one. So in, in other words, let's let's look at, so this is the normal vector. As you can see, the normal vector is indicated just like the points by two uh, values, nx and ny. Now, the transformation about vectors, that slide is about this. If I translated this line, if you move this line, for example, if you move this line to a new place, what will it's going to be tx plus ty and you do the same thing to x1 tx and ty so it's moved imagine you move this line toward to the right uh, below or up does this does moving the line does it change your normal vector it will not right because all these tx's are going to cancel uh, right i mean there you added tx to both of them so x2 plus tx minus x2 minus tx, tx cancel, similarly ty's cancel here, your normal vector doesn't change. So it's not affected, your normal direction here is not affected by the position change. Uh, I mean, if it was rotated, if you rotate this line, if you happen to rotate this line, the normal should also rotate. Or if you, maybe scaling, doesn't change the normal too. Okay, if you scale it, your normal doesn't change. But uh, if, if the normal indicates, for example, in that case, the magnitude is not does not matter. If you want to have this as a normal vector, it's always going to be unit vector anyway. So we want to renormalize it to make it unit vector in, in terms of scale. But you can see the translation of this line segment to a different position doesn't change the normal vector. So one way to achieve that is to have to represent vectors in such a way that their last homogeneous coordinate is zero. Actually, this makes the points undefined because it's going to be division by zero, right? I mean, this is in homogeneous coordinates, H should be the third homogeneous coordinate should be something different than zero because otherwise we are going to have division by zero problem. But we can tr treat vectors, especially knowing that they're vectors 
we can put a zero there and in this case in this way uh, they're not going to be affected by translations because this last zero uh, the, tra the the translation is not going to change whatever its original value is because this last one uh, if it was one it was used uh, to add that tx and ty if it's zero uh, zero to tx and zero times tx and zero times ty will be added to the vectors value so it will not change okay so uh, this is one hack or trick that we can to transform to make uh, vectors um, invariant to translation at least um, composite transformation i mentioned uh, these uh, how we can do transformation a uh, number of times and uh, because matrix multiplication is associative, we do the multiplication first. Here are some example composite transformations. I'm going to quickly go over them. Uh, for example, if you successively translate a point, the effect is basically just you can add these parameters. So successive translations add is just additive. Uh, these displacement in X are just added display similarly in displacement in Y. Or if you're rot rotating, uh, successive rotations, if you first rotate out, uh, 5 degrees and then you rotate theta degrees, the effect will be, and it's a good thing actually, uh, to, uh, to come up with the formula for cos theta plus uh, phi. Uh, since if you know these matrices, and if you don't remember what the formula for, for cos theta and phi was, you can just mul multiply these matrices what you get here uh, will actually be the formula for cos theta plus phi. And this is minus sine theta plus phi. Okay, so the effect will be rotating the point theta plus phi degrees around origin. Same with scaling. Uh, scaling, if you scale it multiple times, the effect will be multiplicative. If you first, for example, um, half the object, and then apply another halving operation so uh, the final object will be the quarter of the size of the original object so 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 so these are really intuitive things so I'm not uh, so composing transformations actually uh, is not interesting when you're composing a transformation of the same type it's, it becomes interesting when we really need them, for example, to scale with respect to some pivot point, like the center of mass of an object. So, yeah, this is rotation around the pivot point. Uh, we have mentioned this. If you want to rotate this uh, pentagon around its center of mass, you first move the center of mass to origin. And when I say uh, that you first do that, you don't actually, if this was part of an animation you want to do, if you imagine you in your program you want to have an animation in which this pentagon is rotating around the center of mass do you really when you do this for example transformation move it here then rotate and move it back do you are you are not actually in the animation you're not going to see these intermediate steps because these intermediate steps are like mathematical steps that i'm talking about you first do that then do that then do this but the final thing is you multiply the transformation that composite transformation is, is applied instantly. So you're actually seeing the final effect of this transformation rotation around its center of mass. So this is first move the center of mass to origin, then perform the rotation theta degrees around origin, and then move it back to its original place. So this is like a 180 degree rotation. If we, if we apply all of them simultaneously, M1, M2, M3, and get a composite matrix out of that, the effect will be rotation around this pivot point. And the formula for this, if you do the multiplication, it will give you the exact same formula. I mean, these are our translation, rotation, and translation matrices that are here on this slide. Our basic transformations here in 2D are on slide 11. And if you uh, apply the this formula, here on slide 19 to uh, to multiply to actually multiply these matrices you're going to get the exact formula that we have here on slide 7 
Okay, so x prime here, which is written as a formula like this, is nothing but uh, you, you are going to see that this is the result of that matrix multiplication. Uh, so, in other words, your x coordinate. So, if if it, if we were to write this as matrix multiplication, how would we do that? We need to uh, play around with some of these, right? I mean, this doesn't look. For example, can you write? Can you? guess what the matrix is going to be like uh, if in the composite transformation if you're rotating around xr y1 uh, so uh, you need to write it in the form that it should appear like ax sorry ax plus by plus Z C. if you write if you write your x prime in this form Whatever A here, you're going to be writing here. Whatever B is, you're going to be writing here. Whatever C is, you're going to be writing here, right? Okay, in matrix form, it's going to be exactly like this. So this doesn't look like to be in that form. Uh, here, it's uh, X times, what is what are the constants for X? Uh, I think it's just cos theta, right? Cos theta, X, and the constant for Y is minus sin theta, oh, sorry, well, yeah, cos theta x minus sin theta y, and c is here x, xr minus xr cos theta, so it's going to be xr minus xr cos theta cos theta, so sorry, this is plus xr plus xr minus xr cos theta plus yr sin theta. So your, your constant here is going to be a long term, which is xr plus, or you can just say 1 minus cos theta plus sin theta. Yeah, it's going to be 1 minus cos theta plus sin theta r, xr. So this will be your C, and it's all constants, your pivot point, your degree of rotation, they're all, all constants. You're going to write it here. And you're going to find this actually when uh, you apply the composite transformation here on slide 17. Where is it? Right here. Not 17, no, it was 19. Yes, slide 19. Okay. Any questions up to this point? All right, uh, let's speed up a little bit. Uh, so this was scaling with respect to a fixed point. I already mentioned that. We, this, is, this is about our example on this uh, slide where we want to scale a square with respect to its center of mass. For that, we move it to origin and then move it. It's the same thing. If you want to scale this pentagon, uh, enlarge it. If you want to enlarge it in this case, for example, uh, this visual example is enlarged. Uh, if you want to enlarge it with respect to the center of mass, if you don't do that, if you do the enlargement, it will it will move a little bit uh, to uh, in this direction. So if you want, if you don't want its center of mass to move, but just expand in its uh, place, you move the center of mass here, and then do the scaling, and then move the center of mass back. So here, uh, these three matrices. Uh, when you multiply them, it's, its effect is going to be this. And here, a very important point is that when we are multiplying uh, these matrices, when we are composing, matrix multiplication is associated. You can multiply in uh, any. I mean, in any preference, you may either first multiply M3 and M2 first, or M2 and M1 first. But matrix multiplication is not commutative. In other words, uh, if you had written M1, M2, M3 instead of M3, M2, N1, the result would be different. And the ramification of this is actually, uh, as first-time OpenGL programmers, you're going to lose your objects. You're going to get lots of black screen in your first OpenGL programs. Because this also implies that 
you write your code in some kind of a, I mean, the, 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 the part that's about transformations, if you're applying successive transformations to an object, uh, in OpenGL, the code that you write in your C program, actually, for example, this is where you say, uh, draw something, for example, draw square. You have a function which says draw square. Okay, and you have some comments saying, for example, GL translate, GL rotate, some GL function calls which uh, do transformations. Okay, now the when you're reading your code from top to bottom, the effect is the square is drawn. It's just like this vertex that appear at the end of this. It's like the equation from left to right correspond to your code from top to bottom. In other words, the final, the final piece of transformation code that you have closest to your draw square function call is the one that is going to be applied first. So, and then this is going to be applied and this is going to be applied. So it's really counterintuitive, right? I mean, it's not like object oriented. You don't have a square first and you say, do it to the, do it, first then do it next it's not object oriented at all it's really like uh, some very static global uh, variable type of thinking Op open gel programming is like that in which when you say draw square it's the point where some global transformation matrix is applied to your squares vertices before you draw them so all these function calls actually uh, are like multiplier current matrix on the right but with this, then on the right with this, and on the right with this. So it's just the lines of the order of lines of code in your OpenGL program corresponds exactly to how you read them on this equation from left to right, which means that they're applied in reverse order. Uh, these transformations are applied in reverse order. So this is we're going to come to that when we talk about OpenGL later. But just uh, this uh, next slide was about order of multiplications is important. So you cannot just change their order um, arbitrarily. I remember when I was an undergrad here, uh, I, 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 I got lots of bugs in my computer OpenGL programs. And sometimes I found myself trying to uh, randomly change the order of lines to see whether it will be fixed. It's very bad. Don't, you don't want to be, find yourself in a situation like this. I mean... Uh, uh, obviously, when you have a lot of transformations, trying all the possible ordering, I mean, it's, uh, the number of permutations is n factorial. You cannot, if you're trying to find yourself, you're doing some trial and error uh, try, uh, uh, kind of uh, coding, it's very bad. So what you need to actually do is uh, solve, uh, write your solution on paper first and see whether it works. Try it on small examples, whether the transformation order is correct or not and solve it analytically yourself find the correct order and then turn it into code okay so it's really important to do that to save lots of uh, precious coding time so uh, this was an example shows you for example if we have two transformations which are uh, for example rotation this one transformation this transformation is rotation around this pivot point 90 degrees. Okay, look at this transformation. Let me use my annotate to, so that you see clearly. So this is the first transformation here. Rotate around this pivot point 90 degrees and translate in the along the y-axis uh, this amount. Okay, so this is this displacement amount. So if you look at the transformations, they're exactly the same. Translation in y-axis this amount and rotation around the exact same pivot point 90 degrees they are exactly the same transformations but their order is changed if we perform these transformations on the same initial triangle this red triangle is the same initial triangle if we first apply rotation around uh, this pivot point 90 degrees uh, it will uh, I, is it 90 degrees rotation let's see if it becomes 90 it's like uh, to me, oh yeah, yeah, the first 90 degree rotation, it comes here, okay, so as you can see, rotating around this pivot point, 90 degrees, so this is 90 degree, first transformation brings us to this dashed um, triangle, 
Then we apply displacement in the y direction, this amount, this is its final position. If we do the same transformation but in different order, translate first along y direction exactly the same amount, it becomes it comes to here, and rotate around this pivot point 90 degrees. Again, it's exactly 90 degrees. And as you can see, the final positions of the triangles are different. So order of your transformations matter. And this will mean that, for example, if you have a camera looking for your triangle at this location in space, and when your triangle is here, it means that you're not seeing your final image is not going to contain this triangle if you do the uh, transformations in different order. Which means that in that huge space uh, around your virtual camera, some objects may uh, be in different places, which means you, you are going to get black screen, you're not going to see them, able to see them. So order of transformations is extremely critical. Uh, there are other transformations. There are some special cases of scaling, which is called sometimes non-uniform scaling. Uh, for example, by this is a really special case, which is called mirror uh, transformations. If we just we, can, we are allowed to use negative numbers sometimes in this. If we use this, these negative numbers uh, as scale parameters, it will allow to have reflection with respect to. Uh, axes. For example, if you have the, your y coordinates inversed, it will be reflection with respect to the x axis. If you have your x coordinates inverted, uh, you will have a reflection around uh, as if the y axis is, is a mirror. So these are like mirror reflections, or you can invert both of them. It's like reflection around origin. Uh, there's also like uh, uh, linear transformation which has some strange effects like shear transform. I have never used shear transform in an OpenGL program I had written before, so it's a really interesting. Uh, I mean, they, they, it, shear transform deforms the object. So, for example, uh, if you look at the equation of shear transform, it's x plus this. There's this shear parameter shx plus y. In other words, you displace, your original x-coordinate is displaced shx plus y amount. So this shx is some constant, for example, if it's 2, 2 times y. So we have something like this, x is equal to x plus 2 times y. So the higher you are, the higher the point is, the, the larger its y-coordinate is going to be shifted more. So the effect will be like uh, for this uh, square here, uh, points that are above are going to be translated more compared to points that are below. So uh, it's like, a, just imagine like a deck of cards, you're moving the ones that are at the top more than the ones at the bottom. So it's, it deforms the object as you can see. As I said, uh, I haven't used uh, such a transformation at all in my life, but it's good to know that uh, we can write anything in this matrix to uh, have interesting transformations. Okay, any questions about 2D transformations? Uh, before we uh, go into uh, 3D transformations, it may be good to have a 10 minute break. Uh, it's 10.30 right now. So uh, I will stop recording and let's have a 10 minute break and I will uh, come back at 10.40.